Yes. Good morning. Uh, I welcome you all uh, after uh, uh, some break uh, for a week. And today we are going to start with an another important module of our course, Vehicle Dynamics. And the module title called Vehicle Handling or Lateral Dynamics of our uh, uh, subject, Vehicle Dynamics. Right. So, what do you mean by lateral dynamics? Can anyone uh, uh, try to help me? Let's have some kind of discussion, then get into our uh, module. Can anyone say what do you mean by lateral dynamics? Vineet Krishna. Sir, the handling characteristics of the vehicle uh, will be discussed briefly in this uh, lateral dynamics part, uh, where we will be using the uh, bicycle models and the uh, lumped mass model for the uh, evaluation of parameters. Okay. And also the two degree of freedom uh, lateral yaw model also it is considered. Yeah. See, whatever we have told, all are one and the same. Uh, you said uh, bicycle model, lump to mass model, or uh, two degree freedom yaw model. So this all are essentially one, uh, and that model is what is popularly called bicycle model. <clears throat> Uh, it's lump to mass model only because we consider only the mass of the uh, vehicle. Uh, so we consider uh, the entire vehicle as a rigid vehicle. Um, so we, we call that as a only mass, uh, lump to mass vehicle. There is no um, uh, springs are there like that, right? Instead, you will consider uh, uh, you will have uh, um, uh, two wheels and their uh, um, uh, cornering stiffness will be considered, right? And that's a bicycle model. And uh, your plane two degree freedom model essentially is this because you are going to look at this model in a plane which is XY plane referred to your ground plane, right? So that's essentially uh, you rightly said uh, looking at the motion of your vehicle using such model can be uh, a study of uh, vehicle handling uh, in, in broader perspective called uh, comes under the purview of lateral dynamics. <clears throat> So, can you uh, have any other uh, response side? Uh, what do you, any more definitions of this lateral dynamics or vehicle handling? You said vehicle handling. So, what do you mean by vehicle handling? What do you mean by vehicle handling? So, vehicle handling refers to what is the responsiveness of your vehicle? What is the responsiveness of your vehicle when you give an input? When you give an input, so you being a driver of your vehicle and for the uh, given input by you, what is the response that your vehicle gives is what is that study of vehicle handling. So what do you mean by that? It is essentially uh, um, driver, vehicle uh, and the environment combination model, right? So you see basically this model would be of, uh, represented by a closed loop control system model or open loop control system model. So closed loop control system model essentially to have a controlled motion and stable motion of your vehicle, right? So when you look at lateral dynamics perspective, we are having two important objective that one is uh, how do you have a good control of your vehicle and how do you have a good uh, stability, directional stability of your vehicle during the course of its motion, right? So closed loop system gives you give an input to what we have seen in longitudinal dynamics. The input is only the acceleration. We do not change the steering. That means we studied the longitudinal dynamics, a 1D motion, a straight line motion. Whereas in case of vehicle handling, we are going to give the uh, uh, steering input. So the vehicle is also having its combination with the curved motion, curvilinear motion. So it's a 2D motion, you can say, as the vehicle is always going to be on the ground with the full stability of its motion. So it is going to have its path, not necessarily now on a straight path, rather it can go in a curved path. So it's a curvilinear motion or 2D motion study is what is also called otherwise vehicle handling or lateral dynamic study. <clears throat> So this closed loop system is always uh, you give a steering input whenever you see your road is not straight you have to take a turn on a curved path so you are giving a steering input so when you give a steering input if your vehicle is on the road it goes in the expected curve then it is having good handling nature 
right? So that means what you look at uh, and uh, you are uh, feeling that as yes, the vehicle responsiveness is what is that I expected. Supposing uh, it is required that you have to keep increasing your steering or keep decreasing your steering as you are taking a turn, then also uh, it is good that you are able to give a response or correct your uh, input by a feedback that you get it from the observation, simple observation, whether it goes in the course or not. So when you have a feedback and then you correct, and that is what is called the closed to loop control system model, <coughs> right? Where you would see that uh, um, to have a mathematical model or to derive the conditions that uh, when there will be an unstable state that can be expected, or is the vehicle to always have a controlled uh, stable motion, so you require such a kind of closed loop control model. <coughs> this is on one side. So you want to talk on more of its stability, its directional control. One of the important parameter that is there, what is called, what is called understeer coefficient. That's called a steady state metric, steady state uh, motion uh, uh, handling metric called understeer coefficient. It's not the notation uh, for that is KUS, which we are going to look at uh, very uh, um, no, um, intensively. And then uh, how do you get the expression for it? And what is its physical meaning? How do you, uh, you know, uh, study the behavior of your vehicle? So if you want to have a behavioral study of your vehicle, that means I go straight, suddenly I give a steer input, pulse steer input, Correct. I just give a steer and then I get back my uh, steering wheel. So pulse steer it is called. Or I go and suddenly I give a steer at a particular steer angle. Then what is the uh, behavior of my vehicle? Such things if you study, that's called an open loop test. So open loop tests are conducted uh, under particular operating condition of a vehicle called the steady state motion, where the motion parameters are independent of time. They will not vary. The velocity will not vary. <clears throat> and such motions are called the steady state motion. So at that time, the responsiveness of your vehicle or the response uh, of your vehicle is called the steady state response. So under that uh, condition, you are going to define something called an important uh, vehicle parameter called the understeer coefficient. So we are going to study that uh, in more detail in our uh, uh, module of lateral dynamic study, right? So to begin with uh, today's lecture, I am going to have an equation that is required to describe the motion of your vehicle. So I am going to have a general case of a vehicle. As the vehicle is not a ground vehicle, it is a vehicle which is in the air. And I am going to take an aircraft and uh, I am going to derive an important governing equation, what are called the Newton Euler equation. So it is basically a rigid body motion. <coughs> So rigid body motion in space, uh, uh, what are the governing equations is what we are going to look at in today's lecture. And that vehicle can be, uh, those equations representing for that can be appropriately deduced to a ground vehicle. So all are connected. So if you are able to do a, a, a study and understand the uh, derivation of such uh, uh, simple um, equations, for to describe your motion in space, uh, you would be able to have an appropriate equation for the particular case of your vehicle. If it is a ground vehicle, how can you go account? Also, it is very important that it is not only this equation what we are going to derive are quite useful for your aircraft study. You see today's uh, research, the vehicle, uh, ground vehicle has been uh, thoroughly experimented. Uh, the feasibility of that uh, can fly up uh, feasibility of that can float on the uh, water. So in such cases, you see the equation, whatever that we uh, derive can be uh, more suitable even for a two axle vehicle, ground vehicle, if it has to be investigated uh, for its uh, uh, lifting up from the ground and to have its motion in space, right? So already vehicles are uh, on a, a, a prototype model and vehicles have been experimented with a single uh, person operating uh, vehicle uh, in air in Japan. So if that is all or the uh, um, uh, background understanding or, uh, that we see, uh, today's uh, uh, particular period of lecture is vital and it's going to give you 
clear cut understanding of how these newton euler equations are derived and are going to be useful for describing uh, the motion right so that's what is essentially today's class summary uh, that i have been teaching you uh, for that purpose let me share my active inspire board hope everyone is able to see this board uh, so let me uh, have today's lecture number Twenty one and today's date was thirty one zero three twenty twenty one and we are with the module three. And it's called lateral. It's otherwise called vehicle handling. Right. So as I have told, uh, this uh, lateral dynamic study is 2D motion. So if I consider uh, 2D motion uh, in XY plane, so this is my X axis and this is my Y axis and uh, this X Y plane now is a ground plane uh, for the purpose of understanding I have drawn on the board on this screen. So you consider this is a ground plane on which I have a route or the uh, path is given by this. So this curve is representing a path over which a vehicle is going to go. Right, a passenger car is going to go on this. So we have studied in rigid body uh, dynamics first uh, with an important ideology called the particle ideology. So what do you mean by particle ideology? The dimension, physical geometry dimension, geometrical dimension of the vehicle can be neglected. So you can consider that to be a point mass, particle mass. So the particle mass is going to translate along the path. If my interest is to see that, uh, the motion of my vehicle is always along this curve. Then I can simply consider its particle mass and I can do my dynamic study. So how do you look at its kinematics? You see that if I have here my particle mass which represent my passenger car, it will be always represented by its position vector. So this is what is called its position vector. So position vector is given from this coordinate system I call this coordinate system is earth fixed coordinate system, right? So or it is called an inertial frame of reference system where Newton's law holds good. So inertial frame of reference means it is a reference which is uh, uh, not accelerating reference, which is a fixed reference on the air. So you may ask earth is also is under motion. So it is rotating on its own axis and uh, goes around or rotates around uh, the sun and its orbit. So you may ask then how can that be an inertial frame of reference? So if you look at uh, um, very close to the surface of earth, you have motion of many rigid bodies or vehicle if you look at for that matter. Their acceleration relatively is so huge compared to that of the acceleration of the earth surface, right? Earth surface. So, uh, which is negligible. So, this assumption is valid. A coordinate which is fixed on the earth is called an inertial frame of reference, which is not an accelerating frame of reference compared to that of the vehicle motion uh, on the earth or near to the earth, right? Near to the earth surface. So, with that assumption, we call this frame XY is inertial frame of reference. I have this vehicle on this path given by its position coordinate. So the position of the vehicle can be best explained from this inertial frame of reference, right? So you see that if this vehicle is uh, uh, under motion and its velocity is always tangential along the path. So at this point where I have shown maybe at time t that we observe this vehicle p has got its velocity vector v which is tangential here. So if that would have been here, it will be tangential here. If that comes here, it is tangential in this direction. Every time the velocity of the 
vehicle is tangential to the path. Right? So that's vehicle uh, velocity vector V. And you see that this velocity happens to be constant. If this velocity happens to be constant, that is steady state motion. That's not varying, then it is steady state. But it is varying, it is accelerating. That means you would have your acceleration vector that would always act in the direction of center of curvature. So this is your acceleration vector of this. So this acceleration vector can be resolved one along the velocity vector, one perpendicular to the velocity vector or along the normal and that all we have seen. Also you can uh, um, resolve these vector along x and y coordinate as uh, uh, x axis is represented by unit vector i and y axis is represented by unit vector j. Right? So this is all something that we have looked at in a simple rigid body dynamics particularly considering particle mass, <clears throat> right? So if I have now uh, uh, my third axis, which is z-axis. So if I have my x, y, z axis like that, and it is my initial frame of reference, if I say, and now this position vector would have three components, x, i, plus y, j, plus z, k unit vectors, right? And I will have here this velocity vector and this acceleration vector. <clears throat> Again, three components. And here it is only translational study that I am looking at it. But if you look at uh, real-time vehicle and more design aspects, the vehicle uh, design aspects, it's, uh, that means I need to have uh, what are the net forces and moments that are acting at the uh, uh, vehicle uh, uh, CG location then I have to consider the physical geometry of my vehicle as well. In such cases, if I consider the physical geometry of the uh, uh, vehicle, this inertial frame of reference representation uh, would not be sufficient to uh, look at uh, alone. Why? Because I require the reference axis which is fixed at the moving vehicle. And that is called body centered or uh, body fixed coordinate reference, uh, body fixed coordinate frame. So with respect to that frame, if I represent my um, velocity vector or the rotational components, the rotational vector of that, the moment I have a rigid body ideology coming out of particle ideology, I would have to account in addition to the translation that takes place along the path, also the rotation of my vehicle. The so rotation of vehicle can be best explained with respect to this body centered coordinate frame. And the rotation uh, would have an effect on the acceleration, absolute acceleration of this vehicle. So that's what we are going to essentially look at it. So the moment you come out of particle ideology, there are two ideology. Another one is rigid body. So when you have my rigid body ideology, I require to have my rigid body fixed with the coordinate system. That coordinate system is called a non-inertial frame of reference. Right? Why it's called a non-inertial frame of reference? That axis system, as the vehicle accelerates along this, about that axis there can be rotation. So you have the axis which is accelerated along the vehicle. So that is non-initial frame of reference, right? So now uh, uh, what is that uh, uh, we are going to look at essentially today's classes. So instead of taking um, um, uh, ground vehicle, let's consider an air vehicle and uh, this particle mass would be a uh, real uh, geometry of my vehicle. And in that, let me represent uh, my uh, uh, fixed body fixed coordinate system. So uh, as now this X, Y is a coordinate and point P represent in space vehicle and aircraft uh, uh, as a particle mass, this study uh, with this uh, simple uh, three motion parameters are sufficient to describe its complete kinematics. Whereas <clears throat> if I have to go in for study of its uh, real dynamics, kinetics, I require its uh, uh, geometrical details or its uh, complete geometry with the body fixed coordinates. 
so for that purpose let me just have now uh, my uh, vehicle so what is my vehicle is an aircraft so let me have an aircraft representation so this is an aircraft A simple sketch that I've drawn. <laughs> so now this aircraft will have its right hand coordinate system with respect to the pilot of the aircraft in the forward direction, say X. Uh, the right half the pilot is Y and uh, down towards ground is the axis. So this small X, Y, Z with respect to this is what is all the body fixed coordinate frame body fixed to coordinate frame and uh, this body fixed to coordinate frame is absorbed from an inertial frame of reference capital x capital y capital z and uh, the vehicle dynamic study would be much explained through the motion vectors at this body fixed coordinate center which are velocity vector it's linear velocity vector given by u i so here now uh, see this is your i j k unit vectors of this body fixed coordinate system capital i capital uh, uh, j capital k can be for this fixed reference uh, so this will be u i plus v j v j plus w k where u v w are the velocity components along x y z respectively right this is my one of the vector and another vector is the rotational vector so this rigid body can rotate about x y z axis so that rotational vector is omega vector. So that would be represented by PI plus QJ plus RK. Vector. So let's call that as my second vector. <coughs> All right. Just a minute. Our vector. So you can also refer this uh, sometime. This vector is a column vector. So I can also rewrite this uh, vector as my small v velocity vector, and this is uh, um, a small omega, which is my angular uh, velocity. So this can be written as a column vector. So this column vector as U, U, V, W, three by one. Let's call this a third vector and omega as. So what are these components? By the way, it is the rates. So the velocity. Uh, in uh, x direction velocity in uh, y direction velocity is in linear velocity in z direction similarly if you look at uh, omega it will have its component p q r where this p q r are representing roll rate so the rotation of my aircraft about x axis the rotation of uh, aircraft about x axis is what is uh, uh, p the rotation of uh, 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 aircraft about y axis is what is q the rotation about the z axis when you see from top what do you get is r so along this uh, um, um, direction positive direction these quantities are positives and these are called roll rate 
and Q is pitch rate and R is yaw rate. Yaw rate. So R means uh, uh, don't uh, misunderstand the role. So you have to be very careful. These notations are commonly used in vehicle dynamic courses. Uh, or in a journal paper, if you refer, PQR will be there where R is yaw rate. So which can be seen from the top view. The change in orientation uh, is what is yaw angle. At what rate that changes with respect to time is what is called yaw velocity or yaw rate, right? <clears throat> yeah. So these are the two things. So why do I have put these two velocity uh, uh, here, linear and angular velocities? Most of the time, this vehicle dynamic study is more detailed and clear if I look at uh, these quantities uh, in the body fixed coordinates uh, system, uh, frame, right? That is the reason. So ultimately, what is that we are going to do? We are going to define now uh, what are the net force and net moment that are acting at this uh, body fixed coordinate uh, uh, on the vehicle body. So if I uh, refer that uh, the net force is given by equation F, which is Fxi plus Fyj plus Fzk. So these components has got a meaning. So what is my FX? So FX is the thrust force component that comes onto the vehicle because of an engine thrust. So which makes your vehicle to translate. And what is the FY? FY is what is the necessary lateral force to maintain uh, the course which is curved path. And what is FZ? FZ is what is the total weight of your vehicle acting down right balanced by that so it's a normal so this is how you represent your net force uh, from its component let's call that as the equation 5 and uh, what is my net moment would be again mxi plus myj plus mzk so again mx is what is uh, uh, about x-axis the moment in x-axis uh, uh, and my is uh, about y axis and mz is about z axis uh, of your uh, vehicle. So, right. so these are all the components in what coordinate system? These are the components in body fixed coordinate frame. I have to derive this uh, equation. I have to get the expression for uh, net force that is fx, fy, fz and mx, ms, my, ms. There are six equations if I look at those components. So these six equations uh, derivation is what is essentially we are going to do in another 10 to 15 minutes. <clears throat> so for that, uh, what is our uh, definition of this force and moment? I define this force as rate of change of linear momentum, right? Rate of change of linear momentum. So what is P vector here is the linear momentum. So how do I define linear momentum? It is mass times the velocity of my uh, vehicle. So this is my linear momentum. So let's call this equation as seventh equation. And how do I get my uh, moment? It is the rate of change of angular momentum. So how do I define angular momentum? Uh, this is again a vector, but it is going to be depends on uh, important property of my rigid body. What is centroidal moment of inertia matrix or it is a tensor where here M is a scalar value constant, whereas I see here is an inertia matrix called a centroidal inertia matrix. So with respect to my centroid, what is my rotational inertia is present? So this is generally a tensor or a matrix form. So this would be of 3 by 3 and multiplied this with vector omega, which is 3 by 1. So I'll have 3 by 1. And this is again a vector 3 by 1 but it is a scaled value of my velocity vector. So whatever component is there, mass, if I multiply, I'll have this. So this is three by one. So this is my equation number eight. So I'm going to have now, 
defining my linear momentum here is done and defining my angular momentum and then I am going to have my uh, rate of change of this. So if I do this, it is essentially mass times acceleration. So this acceleration is what is called an absolute acceleration of my vehicle from the inertial frame of reference. So this acceleration absolute value is now is going to depend on the linear velocity as well as the angular velocity of my body fixed coordinate system, how it, they are related. So that's what is what I'm going to uh, do today. So here you see this is going to be, uh, uh, what is this is going to be? Uh, the rate of change of this. So I would define that as I C into alpha. Alpha is a vector again. So uh, alpha and A are the absolute quantities. So they depend upon the rotational uh, motion of my rigid body. So that has to be accounted. So how do I go and derive it? For that purpose, let us look at uh, for the simplicity. For the simplicity. This. So uh, let's define this. Let's number this equation. So this is 7, 8. And uh, in this, uh, this two are seven eight, and in this, what is IC? What is IC? Is the uh, uh, mass moment of inertia and product of inertia or uh, centroidal inertia matrix. So I would have IXX, IYY, IZZ, which were the diagonal terms of this matrix called mass moment of inertia of my vehicle. So how do I define IEXX mathematically? That's going to be integral y squared plus z squared into dm. How do I define my um, product of inertia? So product of inertia is off diagonal term. So I have here IEXY, IEXZ. So here I have IYX, I is that uh, i i y is it and i have here i is that x i uh, is that y so these are the nine elements if you look at uh, this uh, uh, symmetry matrix so i x y and i y x the same i y is that and i is that y is same i x z and i is that x same so there are um, six terms and these half diagonal terms are independent. So there are independent six uh, uh, values are there. So diagonal terms are called mass moment of inertia. Whereas half diagonal terms are called the product of inertia. Product of inertia. How do I define this? It's minus x uh, uh, y dm. So product of coordinate times the elemental mass. What you are you get as an elemental product of inertia. Integrate over the entire volume that you get uh, your uh, product of inertia. So uh, this is how you can just define uh, this quantity. So let me call this matrix uh, as ninth equation. And this two uh, mathematical definition of this element as 10th equation. This set is 10th equation. Uh, so now, uh, knowing this uh, uh, definition of uh, uh, linear momentum and angular momentum, I would be able to have my basic dynamic, based on basic dynamic principle, the definition of force and moments given by uh, this. So let's call those equation as 11th equation linear equation force equation and this is uh, momentum uh, moment equation as 12th equation <clears throat> so uh, now uh, how do we go about deriving this equation for that so let us yeah so could you explain the uh, the terms in the 12 um, equation again see this is what is the moment equation right so the net moment uh, acting on the body of the vehicle is uh, rate of change of angular momentum. So HC is angular momentum. Angular momentum is defined as what? I times omega. So where I is 
in general for a rigid body is not a constant like mass it is a tensor so the tensor is given by this matrix equation 9 where alpha is the angular acceleration okay sir okay sir. yeah yes, sir. Uh, and the, the equation 8 is what is called an angular momentum. Equation 7 is what is defining a linear momentum. So these two momentums are required uh, to define uh, force and uh, a moment respectively. Right? Yeah. 